What's up folks, we got a pretty cool announcement a couple of days ago from Vercel. Their hooks for data fetching called Use SWR are into version 2. So this is a big new major version dropping. So the big deal with this is Use SWR mutation. SWR at its base is basically a data fetching tool. It's a hook that you can use in React to basically fetch all of your data kind of like React query. So you don't think of mutations as usually part of the deal. But here we have a use SWR mutation hook where we first pass in the key and then we pass in the function that's actually going to be sending the request. We get back a trigger function and an is mutating boolean. So we have a button that's disabled when it's mutating, but you can click it to trigger the mutation. This hook also supports a bunch of other use cases that you need to think about when you're mutating data. The first one is optimistic UI. Imagine you have a server somewhere that you need to update this new data with. That server might be somewhere really, really far away and it might have really low latency. So to make the UI that you're building feel really, really quick, you can use an optimistic update, which is you update the data on the front end before you get word back from the server that everything's okay. That's why it's like, an optimistic update. It's like, okay, I hope it's going to be okay. But it's extremely useful and it's what apps like Linear and Notion use to make sure that your data feels really, really snappy. Let's imagine that you're fetching some to-dos from API slash to-dos. If you have a button in your UI that says add new to-do, then you can call mutate afterwards to make sure that your existing data fetching hook refetches. But while you're waiting for it to refetch, you can actually pass in optimistic data. Here we're spreading in the existing data and appending new item to the end of it. This means that it will instantly show up in your UI. If we're really, really optimistic about our data, we don't even need to ping the server. We can just pass populate cache true and revalidate false. This means that our optimistic data becomes the new source of truth. Finally, if our mutation fails, we probably want to roll back the optimistic update we made. Sure, we were optimistic, but we actually got it wrong. To handle this, you can pass rollback on error true, which is actually the default. You don't need to pass this. This means that your optimistic data will roll back if the promise that mutate is wrapping fails. SWR now also ships with a preload function. This means that you can load the data as soon as the JavaScript module basically comes into scope. To do this, we can call the preload function, which is an export from SWR itself. And you can call this anywhere, including outside of your component. This means that we start preloading the resource before React even starts to render anything. If you're already preloading something and SWR tries to load it again from inside a component, it will fall back to that previous preload. So you don't need to worry about deduplicating any of this stuff. There's also a new piece of state that comes from the use SWR hook, which is called is loading. This is obviously like a pretty basic thing if you have like a data fetching hook, but previously they had something called is validating. The difference is that is validating triggers whenever you revalidate the data that's coming back from your API, whereas is loading only triggers the first time. This is quite idiomatic actually, because ideally you just want to show a loading spinner once, and then for the rest of the application's lifecycle, you just want to optimistically update. There's some other stuff they've put into this major version as well. They've improved their React 18 support, so they're using use sync external store. But all the stuff they've had already is still compatible with React 16 and 17. If you're using use SWR1, then they also have a migration guide for certain things too. This is a really cool release. I don't know how it affects the landscape yet of whether you should be choosing this over React query if you're doing data fetching. Tanstack Query is obviously a really, really prominent member of this ecosystem, and so it's hard to say this is going to unseat it or not. This is being built by Vercel and the Next team, so it's probably going to have really, really good integration with Next. But Tanstack Query also has really good integration with Next as well. So I'm not going to offer an opinion about which one you should choose here, but these are both members of the ecosystem, and you should probably be considering one or the other. So thanks for joining along for this update. My name's Matt. You can buy my TypeScript course at totaltypescript.com if you want to become a TypeScript wizard. Other than that, I will see you guys very soon.